Welcome, 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 geeks and nerds, girls and boys, to another episode of Geek to Me Radio. Tonight, we are celebrating the 40th anniversary of Transformers cartoon. We've got Greg Berger, who voiced several characters on the show, including Grimlock. Later on, we'll hopefully get Paul Eiding on. We're just waiting on him to show up. Uh, we'll talk about the new Transformers convention in L.A. and more. Stand by. We're talking TV, comics and movies, and video games. Star Trek from Star Wars will try to explain The are drop doctors for Hogwarts houses One ring rolls and more To be the greatest Pokemon master You must catch them all You must catch them all And if you're driving around the greater St. Louis area tonight, listening to us on the big 550 KTRS, hello to all of you. If you're streaming us via the KTRS app or online, we appreciate you doing that. Of course, if you're watching us on Facebook and YouTube, hello to all of you out there. We appreciate you joining us visually, I guess is the way you would say it. Uh, We are broadcasting once again from the Gold Tower here at Westport Plaza. I'm your host, James Enstall. Joining me on the other side of the monitor, you can see him. You know him, you love him. Greg Berger, voice of, of course, Grimlock, as well as many other characters uh, from so many different projects. But we're going to focus on the Transformers tonight. Greg, thanks for being on the show with us. You know what? I'm grooving and uh, digging your uh, theme song. That's really great. Thank you. Thank you. I only go where I'm invited. So thank you very much for... uh for uh, having me uh, come by your way. It's of really course. nice to be here. No, it's always great to have you on. Uh, I think this is, I may have to get you one of those gold jackets like Saturday Night Live because I think this is the fifth time you've been on the show now. So. That's it. <laughs> get me my jacket, please. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and talking about going where you're asked, we are talking off air before we started. You've got some international travel going on this year. Yeah, my passport is current and I'm ready to go. I'm going to be... Uh, guesting back to back at two conventions in australia in april and um yeah i i uh i guess i got uh, some more later in the year that aren't quite confirmed so i realize i better not talk about them quite yet but uh i'm gonna be quite the globe trotter this year and i got uh domestic stuff in the u.s i really enjoy conventions uh one coming up that you mentioned in march in la that's going to be a 40th anniversary reunion for transformers characters lots and lots of us in the same place at the same time how can it be 40 years i know one day at a time but (laughs) it's nuts it's crazy um these are these are people that uh I started off doing episodes with, then suddenly seasons with, and now um, they're friends for a lifetime over decades. It doesn't make any sense, but here we are, you know. it. Uh, we bonded early, and uh, we've held on to each other for the better part of a lifetime. It's, uh, it's a good kind of how can that possibly be. Right. But here we are. Yeah. Me Grimlock, me Dinobot leader. <laughs> Still, uh, still hanging in there, and they keep calling, and we keep uh, jumping up, uh, ready to serve. Yes, sir. It's it's absolutely amazing because, as I often refer, I said someone someone says something happened in 1995. I'm like, oh, it was just 10 years ago, and I'm like, exactly. oh no, it hurts because my I've got to have that cognitive dissonance that no, that was actually 95 was already 30 years ago. I'm like, ouch, how is that possible? How is that possible? Somebody fiddled with the time space continuum. <laughs> Wibbly wobbly timey wimey. We've got some chats. Yep. I always neglect the chats. I'm being better about this. Those for those of you in the chats, uh, hello to our friend Chance at the Nostalgic Pod Blast in Atlanta. He says hi. Uh, thank you for hey, tuning man. in. And his friend Sarah, evidently in Southern California, is watching, but for some reason can't comment. So hello, Sarah. Uh, hopefully we can get that solved so you can we comment. We feel for you. Us. And we've got Brittany, our friend Brittany uh, Shafe. 
I absolutely adore the commercials. We do the vintage toy commercials before when we're at commercial break, and she loves those. Shannon Mueller says, I was thinking, um, I was thinking, wow, taking some, taking me back. Yeah, all the stuff, taking you back with those retro commercials and, of course, my amazing guests. Um, we've, so I'll try to keep an eye on these chats as we go. Amber Jones woke up. She's in UK. Amber Jones randomly woke up to find this on her feed, so she's glad to catch hey, some of Amber. it. Amber. Um, and Howard Morton says, congrats, sir. Thank you, Howard. Uh, so lots of people in the chats. I'm going to try to pay more attention to the chat. So thank you to all of you who are participating. Um, 40th anniversary year, uh, Hasbro, I believe, has lots of uh, Easter eggs coming in the way of anniversary treats and surprises. And um, it's it's plenty awesome. I mean, it's a milestone and it's an achievement that deserves celebration. And that's what we're going to do. Yeah. And it's interesting too, as as the voice of Grimlock, you you originated this character back in eighty, probably eighty three. I guess you're probably recording them a little before that released. Me need new strategy. <laughs> did do they do they still send you like Hasbro says? Hey, we've got a new Volcanicus combiner figure here, Greg. Here's one for you. Uh, there's been a lot of love from both sides, and uh, I've been very very good to Grimlock, and Grimlock's been very very good to me so it's kind of a mutual admiration society and <laughs> on and on it goes you know yeah it just it's it's you mentioned how you all bonded because it, it must be nice when you go to these conventions and you see john Mashita jr or you see yep. hal rayleigh i think is rayleigh is how you pronounce it rail Ra rail and uh to see all those we just had on my justice league podcast that i we just talked to shannon farnan sure. And she sure. was saying how much the business has changed, the voiceover business has changed, but there's still that that great bond that all of you have um, because it was almost like a renaissance because a lot of the people who were doing the Hanna-Barbera stuff started to retire and phase out by the late 70s and then came in this new crop of young upstarts like yourself and like uh, like Paul, who's going to be joining us shortly, and you got to... Well, I'm, yeah, I'm kind of one of the bridge people. Um right behind uh, Welker and some of the... I, I, Animation Magazine came out with an issue that listed me as one of the top 10 of the new generation at that time. But at that time, it was a new generation coming after like a, a, uh, a generation that included some of the original great greats that we all kind of were on the living room floor watching every Saturday morning. So it was changing at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, it goes through changes. Um, so I came in on the heels of that. And um, there's some great young people coming up. But the industry changes. The pace of it changes. Everything changes. But um, I was saying to you, uh, James, before the show, it was kind of like the golden age of radio, uh, I mean, I had this conversation with Howie Morris when we were doing Garfield and Friends, where in those days of uh, the golden age of radio, you, you had to check your watch and check your calendar to find out, you know, what studio you were supposed to be in uh, going by what time it was on the clock. And you were always late for something. Mm -hmm. It was like that in those days. Uh, our shows were overlapping. G.I. Joe and Transformers right. were recording at the same time, usually in the same studios, either north or south. But as you finished one session, you were due or overdue at the next session. We were running, running for the next session. Uh, it was chaos, but it was, man, it was golden chaos. It yeah. was the best kind of busy you could possibly imagine. And as an actor, being busy is always what you want. But it, you, obviously you look back on it 40 years removed now. When you were in the thick of it, did you realize how special this was? Not only to you at that time, but man, we're really doing something fantastic that's going to last four decades from now. Well, here's the deal. I mean, Wally Burr, who was our director for Transformers and G.I. Joe, uh, was a very firm taskmaster. So he had uh, an insistence about how things had to be. But look at the longevity of what he created by that insistence. Those of us on the other side of the glass, you know, the new cars say they can see around the next curve, but nobody can see around the next mm. curve. 
So you commit to the task at hand, but you can't see the future. We didn't know that uh, that what we were doing would be embraced by fandom for uh, the incredible future that this has had. That uh, you know, at conventions, we would be meeting not only fans but their kids, who they introduced to the shows, who embraced it the same way they did. This is unbelievable and you know there's some kind of x factor involved that nobody can predict but we're the we're the beneficiaries of it so you just gotta you just gotta take it and love it you know the the fact that that uh it has this kind of staying power because it's it's character driven stories right. and that will always be appealing uh, and we're lucky enough to be part of it. Speaking of always appealing, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Paul Eiding has joined us. The, the always appealing Paul Eiding. <laughs> I apologize for being late. We had a, a matinee today. We had a, uh, a talk back with uh, a, a bunch of college students who were theater students. So uh, yeah, I'm doing some Shakespeare. Oh, very and, nice. Uh, cool. How did the show go? It went, it, went, it went really well. Uh, it's a Shakespeare play that isn't done that often called uh, The Winter's Tale. Yeah, yeah. It's a difficult play because it's basically two plays stuck together. First act is very dark. Second act is a lot lighter and a lot more humor. And it's it's considered one of his problem plays. It's not a, hmm. a straight tragedy, nor is it a comedy. Hmm. So it's somewhere in between. And to have these college students uh, come and have some, had some very good questions and had a lot of questions. Uh, uh, so I apologize. I'm very no sorry. We're very glad you could join us. This is great. Uh, we were just chatting about the, the 40th anniversary Transformers, obviously, and how you and Greg Ooh. will both be at Trans... I, I keep wanting to call it Transformers Con, just TF Con LA uh, in yeah. Burbank on March 8th through the 10th. And it's we were saying the, the lineup. Let me real quick for those of you who are oh uh, in uh, the chats again. Hello, Barry, listening in Atlanta. It's and a long list. I know. I mean, long just, list. just speaking like G1 people, we've got Arthur Berghart, voice Devastator, Bo Weaver, who voiced Octane. We've got Dan Gilvezan, Bumblebee, Goldbug, Hotspot. We've got Frank Welker, who voiced Megatron. We've got Greg Berger, voice of Grimlock and Skyfire, along with Long Haul and Outback. Hal Rail, Shrapnel, Snarl, Pipes. We've got Jerry Hauser. This is his first appearance at a convention. Sandstorm and Junkyard. Uh, Joe Leahy, the voice of Razor Claw. We've got John right. Mashita Jr. We've had on this show before the voice of Blur, Punch, and Counterpunch. Uh, we've got Melanie Britt, who voiced She-Ra, which is, again, underrated cartoon. Everyone talks about He-Man. Not enough love given to She-Ra. Michael Bell, Prowl, Sideswipe, Bombshell, Brainstorm, First Aid, and more. Uh, Michael McConey, who voiced Trax and Cosmos. Neil Ross, Bone Crusher, Hook, Six Shot, Slag, Point, uh, point Blank. Paul, who voiced Perceptor and the Quintessons. Uh, Peter Cullen, Optimus Prime, obviously. Yeah, some guy named Peter Cullen. I, he's yeah. done a couple things, I think. Peter Cullen. <laughs> but then they've also got like Stan Bush and Vince DiCola, who did the music for the movie from 86. Bob Bukansky, who's like the godfather of Transformers, who created all your backstories, all your names, the file cards, the comics. Writers like sure. Don Glutt, Buzz Dixon, Flint Dill, uh, Ron Friedman, who wrote Ron the Friedman. screenplay. So if you're a Transformers G1 fan, this is a god. As soon as I saw they list this, my plane tickets were booked like eight months ago. I'm so excited to go to this thing. Well, that's all the time we have, folks. So thanks for listening <laughs> in. <laughs> have your pet spayed or neutered. Thanks very much, folks. Uh, but what, what an exciting time. Uh, and I guess this is just like so much fun for the both of you because you get to visit with old friends. Yeah. Right. And honestly, in those days, so much writing kind of was modified and adapted during session time that we really had relationships with the writers and the producers and the and the story editor we knew everybody knew everybody it was it was uh it was kind of different from the way things are done now where everything is kind of fragmented well it's uh, since covid it's it's been sure essentially isolated and alienated where things are either coming from zoom sessions or 
or uh, you know people alone in the booth. We recorded everything ensemble style yep. uh, with octopus mic setup so we were all in scenes together and my opinion is that everything for actors who are in the studio together has kind of a contagious bettering effect when you get to play together yeah there's a more um, there's a more not. a more immediate immediacy and uh it sounds more impromptu but it, of course it wasn't it was you it know is. everything but it was it, it, the scripts were there, um, but you really got to you know, get to to work off of each other, and that's what actors want to do. They want to bounce would. things off. Yeah, I know. I know you both worked in video games, and I know uh, Kevin Conroy famously said after doing all the shows and Batman and Justice League. He said doing the video games was sometimes it was worse than a root canal because you're in this this booth by yourself <laughs> alone. And it's like, OK, give me the line. You say the line. OK, now with a bit of a smile, I do it again now with a wry smile. And Kevin's like, what does that mean? You don't have that yeah. immediate intimacy of working with the other actors, which he even he lamented is definitely lacking in certain aspects of video game stuff. The only yeah. thing that's worse is doing it while you're getting a root canal. <laughs> <laughs> So we don't recommend that, folks, for those of you listening. One of the great things about uh, doing the cons now for I'll, I'll speak for myself is that now that's pretty much the only time you get to hang out with other voice folks. Yeah, because generally you're you're there by yourself unless you get lucky and get into a show where you know, you're working with a couple of other people. But generally now you're solo. Uh, so uh, doing and TFCon, these guys know how to do con Colin. Uh, they, they really know what they're doing. So it's going to be a great time. And it's a time, like you said, for us to get together with each other. I don't see Greg that often. I love this guy. <laughs> he knows it. Uh, and where we get a chance to hang out together, it's just heaven for me. You know? Yeah, brothers from other mothers. <laughs> the truth. <laughs> the truth. And we've done so many things together. So many shows together. We, we met we met on stage. We met in a play. Oh wow. Yeah. Which is the best way to meet. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah and I know every actor who I've had, be they voice actors, uh, you know, movie actors, TV actors, if they started in on in theater, they've always said they love going back and doing theater again. That's that's still the it's just there's no comparison to that instant reaction from a live audience. Here, that's here. that's why I'm doing the Shakespeare. They they called uh, they had auditions. I wasn't going to audition. I, I wasn't, I didn't think I was going to have time to do it. And they called and uh, offered me a role. And um, I agreed. And I'm really happy I did because uh, there's nothing like the live audience. And the live audience is another reason why we love doing the cons because yeah. folks are there. Of it's course. nice to hear people who enjoy your work or have questions about your work, but you don't get to see them. If it's an email or something like that or something on Twitter or whatever. Right. So uh, when you get to meet folks in person, it's it's like having the live audience there. And even it. finding the energy to go on and hearing the audience before the curtain goes up. Everything about it. Yeah. 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 And uh, our friend Amber Jones, who we mentioned is watching from the UK, says this is her first time coming to the United States. So she's coming here just for TFCon. That's how big wow. and, ex and exciting this thing is. And our friend Mary Smith says, hi, everyone. Uh, she's listening as well. Or watching, I should say, if they're making the comments here. Um, Amber, I like your hair. I love your haircut. I don't know when you I don't know when you got it cut, but it's really it's really cute. <laughs> <laughs> see where else can you get a compliment like that look at this um we're gonna take a really quick commercial break uh we're gonna come back if you have a chat or a question you can either obviously put it in the chats right there if you're watching us on facebook or youtube or if you're listening just via the radio which is perfectly fine you can text us your questions at 84126 on the ktrs text lines just put your name where you're listening from and your question like hi this is james from maryland heights this is joey from south city whatever you want to say and we'll ask your question for greg or paul as we go on so we're going to take a very brief commercial break We'll come right back after this, chatting more with these gentlemen. You're listening to geek to me Radio on the Big 550 KTRS. Please stand by. 
What's inside? It connects to Hoss Iron Candy. Introducing Hoss World. Three play sets in one. New from Star Wars Micro Collection line. 19 die cast figures and action poses included. Closed doors. Race tower. Activate Iron Cannon. Connected to Hoss Generator Attack. Scout Walker's hit. Target generator. The world of Hoss is now. Yeah! Hoss World from Star Wars Micro Collection line. Play sets also sold separately. Figures included. New from Kenner. You can wish upon a star. I've been so busy granting wishes, I'm tired. Well, let's fly home to the land of wish come true, and you ride Lavender. Lavender, the magical unicorn, Jazz and True Love, each sold separately. Mom left at the clouds. Now Lavender needs to be brushed. She's beautiful. Your turn to ride. Because the only thing more fun than flying is flying a Lavender. <laughs> Lavender, the magical unicorn, and Star Fairies, each sold separately. From time. Magic control destiny. Spectral light battle evil darkling lords. Light of the magical light. Visionaries with magical power they Everybody, this is John Machida Jr., Terrible Tester Verde, the Micro Machine Man, also known as Blur. I just want to let you know that you're listening to Geek to Me Radio. There he is, the voice of John Machida Jr., Blur himself, bringing us back from commercial break. You're listening to Geek to Me Radio on 550 KTRS. We'll make sure before we delve back into our conversation, we tell you about our premier sponsor, the Greater St. Charles Convention and Visitors Bureau. Discover stcharles.com. If you are looking to visit someplace new, the weather is starting to turn. It was almost 70 degrees here in St. Louis today at the end of February, but we're going to have hail, and it's going to be 40 degrees tomorrow, so just hang out if you don't like the weather today. Uh, but St. Charles is always a great place to visit, no matter what the weather is. If you are uh, maybe on the West Coast, like our friends Greg and Paul, or maybe you're on the East Coast, maybe you're in the greater St. Louis area, just haven't made that trip across the bridge lately to go check out St. Charles. Never a better time. There's places to eat. There's new restaurants opening up all the time. And the entire Main Street area is made up of these small businesses. And this economy, it's never been more important to support small businesses than it is right now. So if you are looking to plan a trip, if you're local and just want to go someplace new for dinner, start at the website, discoverstcharles.com, discoverstcharles.com. You can check out all the things there are to do. There's always like an ice sculpting event or they've got a food truck day down in Frontier Park. Always something going on, always something new to discover. Uh, just celebrated their 250th anniversary a couple of years back, so it's going strong still. Once again, the website, discoverstcharles.com, as we always say, it's an historically good time. Chatting with my guests, Paul Eiding and Greg Berger, Perceptor and Grimlock, respectively. Uh, chatting about TFCon LA, which is happening March 8th through the 10th. You'll be able to meet both of these gentlemen there. You'll be able to get them to sign something for you. Uh, Funko Pops, my gosh, the licensing on these Funko Pops. I think they've got a Funko Pop of just about every franchise out there. I saw a Grimlock yeah. one in the store the other day. Uh, and I know that Hasbro's made a brand new, they're making the 86 from the movie line of toys. So they've got a brand new Dinobots out and they're ginormous. I got the Perceptor one that I'm going to have Paul sign. But I assume you guys have like an entire collection of toys and th of the people you voiced, both of you. I, I have, uh, hmm, not all of them. I've got, <laughs> uh, I've got several. I've got, uh, uh, Oh, what's his name? Um, from uh, Incredibles 2. Okay. Uh, I can picture uh, him. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> I can look it up now. My, oh, I remember my superpowers vomiting um, uh, Reflux. That's his name. <laughs> there we go. I've got, I've got Reflux and I've got uh, No Zone from uh, um, the Toxic Crusaders that, that, that we, I did with Greg. Right, you were in not Toxic Crusaders, right, Greg? Thank God. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, and of course, I've got probably seven different, uh, seven, yeah, about seven or eight different uh, trans, uh, preceptors. Uh, some people have made for me. Oh, nice. And others, yeah, others just the different versions. I still have my original from way back when. Yeah. That I've never been, I'd have to. I'd have to put it in a washing machine to really get all the dust off <laughs> uh, uh, because it's pretty embedded. And I've lost uh, a rifle. Uh, yeah, I got I got a bunch of those and and some Grandpa Max uh, things from. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, and some other things. 
Oh, and a, a Smurf. I've got a Smurf that uh, um, before most of the, <laughs> our fans were born, um, <laughs> <laughs> Chimney Sweep Smurf. I've got him that somebody sent me. Uh, yeah, a bunch of stuff. You got anything from Garfield? I have Grimlocks. I have Odies. I have Corn Feds. I have Grombles. I have... Uh, I got uh, I got a little bit of lots of stuff, and I've got things that uh, people have, you know, made for me yeah. or drawn for me, and I treasure them. And it's just, uh, it, it it's kind of fantastic the one on one with uh, fans at conventions. It's really shocking and humbling and empowering every time and it really just the phenomenon of conventions and the notion of flying thousands of miles and having a line of people waiting when you get to another country <laughs> yeah. it's nuts uh, yeah. and it's wonderful and it's uh it's it kind of knocks you out. It's 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 very fantastic with the emphasis on F A N. It's 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 really yeah, and it's humbling. Ugly. It's humbling, and I know we've talked about this. The two of us, we don't we take none of this for granted. No, dear God, we feel so blessed. Yeah, it's a two way it's a two way table because. Uh, Thankfully, there are people that come to say thank you, but we get to go to say thank you. Yeah. Uh, and it's sincere and it's authentic from both sides. It's a very beautiful thing. And I'm not trying to get all warm and fuzzy. It's also <laughs> funny and silly and stupid and happy and, and ridiculous. And uh, I just love it. I really, truly do. And I know you do too, Paul. Uh, Absolutely. And when we get tables next to each other, <laughs> there's spitballs and there's <laughs> all manner of just stupid going to camp and and just pranking and 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 just having good old kid fun. I've been told Acting the two of you will yeah. be separated at this convention because you are such trouble. Yeah, sometimes they the have to separate us. Sides. Okay. <laughs> now I've said it. We've got our, our friend <laughs> listening. Brittany Schaaf wants to know. She's curious as to what dream roles or projects Greg and Paul have, something you haven't worked on yet but would want to, either in voice or live action. We'll start with Greg. That's a good one. Wow. Um, <clears throat> I feel like I've been so gifted with all of the things that I have done. Um, I wouldn't mind getting my teeth around uh, either a podcast or an ongoing uh, radio drama. I think that would be really fun to have a character that has arcs and dips and sways and a cast uh, that that uh, w went together on something that may or may not even be written yet. Hmm. But uh, that would be fun. Uh, uh, again, to, to dig into something that that uh, had the ability to grow and not necessarily like a sitcom have to get back to square A yeah. by the end of every 22 minutes, but actually have the ability to to just thread on and, and continue adding story. That would be fun. That's a really good question. That's a great question. And, you know, my, my response is pretty close to yours. There were two things that came to mind. Well, actually, three. And one I got rid of immediately. And that was uh, a blog uh, 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 about my thoughts and whatnot. Because when you come, there's too many people <laughs> right now. Uh, we don't add, I don't have to share all my thoughts with everybody all the time because I'm, uh, a lot of my thoughts aren't worth sharing. Uh, <laughs> but the, the idea of doing... Um, I've, I've done a couple of little parts in ongoing podcasts, but I, that would be a, a great, great, uh, great fun to do. Uh, there's that. And then there's a, there's a, a play, a two character play that I've, I've been looking at. Uh, it's been done. Um, it's a great play called Heisenberg. Hmm. Um, it's a, a man, uh, an older man 
and a woman in her uh, mid forties, uh, and they meet, and and he the Heisenberg principle is that you never know what's going to happen next. There's no way of knowing, but no matter how much you plan or how much you think ahead or how much you understand the world, you never know exactly what's going to happen. It's the uh, uh, probability doesn't enter into real life. Um, and it's it's that kind of a, a piece. Hmm. And I'd, I'd love to do that. I've been looking at, I've been working with a, an actress uh, in class um, by the name of Calico Cooper, who is Alice Cooper's daughter. Oh. And she's a brilliant actor. Uh, and we talked about doing something like that. So it's that. Um, but the voiceover wise, it would be like uh, like Greg, a who podcast that goes on. Who wrote I, the play? I don't remember his name. It, 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 won, um, it won the Tony about 10 10 years ago, nine or 10 years ago uh, for best play. Mm. Uh, it's, it's a brilliant piece. And it's just, it's just two characters, no set, just a couple of tables. And Simon Stevens. Chair. Say again? Simon Stevens is the writer. I just looked oh, it up. Well done. You're well <laughs> done. Uh, and it's, it's a fascinating piece. And I would have to work on my, uh, my English accent because it takes place in, uh, in England, in the UK. Uh, but it's, uh, yeah, it's something that it would, it would really make me work. Um, and it's also lovely to know that I can still remember lines. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's exciting. Anyway. Well, after, after I get a play in my head, I have to wear earplugs just to keep the play in. <laughs> so it doesn't, so it doesn't drip out one ear. Oh, uh, I go over my lines every day, whether we're on stage or not. And when I get to the theater, I walk the stage. I get there long before half hour and I go through all my lines. I walk through everything right. to myself right. and you got to do it. Uh, whatever the thing is, and this, I mean, it's like a life note, but, but if you, whatever your process is, is your process, yeah. you know, whatever works for you, works for you. Go with that. And as long as you do all the work, then when you're actually in in performance or yeah, or, or at work or whatever, if you've done all your homework, then you can play. Correct. And it becomes real and honest. Correct. Uh, yeah. So I, I do my homework. Yeah. So hopefully, Brittany, hopefully that answers your question. I do thank you for the question. I appreciate all you listening. <clears throat> Um, everyone in the chat's just chatting with themselves right now, which is adorable. I love it when they do that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was curious, with this being such a big con, has there been one kind of like, obviously it's the 40th anniversary, but is this very rare that all of you get together? Like normally there might be one or two of you, but this is kind of a big deal, right, for all of you to be together? Yeah, uh, I think it's pretty exceptional. Just the lineup is, is ginormous, and... Um, given it's it's in our backyard for many of us who are west coast based so uh, there's it, there's an ease with with getting to it um but still uh i i think uh i don't think anybody is glossing over the sort of milestone yeah. that that we're all kind of celebrating together and so everybody's what if what if they gave a party and everybody said yes yeah. you know yeah uh, it's it, it it's it's uh nobody's turning their nose up at it nobody's making light of it and uh, it looks like everybody uh is 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 showing up and yeah. i i think that's only fantastic i I'm go not, out of my way and i know paul does too uh to try to go where we're invited and the invitations come from all over the world which is unbelievable and fantastic and um there's people coming to this convention that don't go to conventions right so it, it's gonna it's gonna be a party yeah and I, I i'm a little upset because i can only i can't be there uh sunday afternoon because uh it's our last weekend and uh -huh. i have a friday night show saturday night show so Sure. That's no problem on Saturday, but but uh, Sunday, 
I have a two o'clock matinee. Mm, sure. So um, I've I've alerted everybody there that uh, I have to be there in the morning or. And I'm I'm bummed because I'm not going to be there for the end, you right. know. Yeah, and I think I think if I'm remembering correctly, Frank Welker is only there on Sunday. I think, uh, for uh, his perp. So there's, um, a, there's a lot of uh, movable pieces. I'm not sure who's yeah. who's there when and for how long. So if you're listening, you want to make sure you get to see Paul on Saturday, folks, uh, before you don't, you miss him on Sunday. <laughs> so that's uh, but it's it's just so amazing, and I I can't emphasize enough uh because like i said this was this was one of my seminal shows i I came home after grade school and i'd put on the tv and i'd have transformers on to greet me every time i came home um it's just it's amazing that now what i do is i get to talk to people like the both of you who just had such an impact like i hear your voices when i read the marvel comics um anytime i see a toy (laughs) it's your voices i hear which i'm sure the both of you must get that all the time why are you late for school? <laughs> Listen, I got it from uh, my cast members. Uh, several m- members of the cast uh, are younger. They're in their uh, mid-30s, um, mid-30s, early 40s. And they just knew me as Paul, the, you know, doing Shakespeare together. And someone, <laughs> and I wore a T-shirt that my wife got me. It was a, anyway, it was a Transformers T-shirt. And they asked me, oh, you're, we're in a transform. I, I love trans. And I told them that I was one of the original cast members. And then they just, they went crazy. Uh, <laughs> it was lovely because, you know, here we are. We're, we've rehearsed for several weeks uh, doing all of our stuff. And uh, then not, everything changed because then, and they, one of the guys apologized. said, I'm sorry, man, I'm a fanboy. I said, no, we're just fellow actors. <laughs> but love the Transformers. Yeah. Raised on it, you know. Yeah, just an amazing legacy. That's why we're still celebrating it uh, 40 years I got years introduced later. by a guy uh, who said, the next person I'm going to bring up is the reason that, let us let me get it right. When they were on in the morning, I was always late for my first period class. When they were on in the afternoon, <laughs> I always sat in the desk closest to the door so that I could <laughs> run when the bell rang and get home before it started. Yeah, oh, I love that. That's about right. Uh, again, if you're just now tuning in, uh, this will be available later on once we upload it to the podcast form. So don't despair if you're just now tuning in. Uh, you can listen to this later on, and you'll be able to hear the whole show with Greg and Paul. I'm going to take one more quick commercial break. We are going to come right back, and we'll chat more with these gentlemen. If you have a question, you can text us on the KTRS text lines 84126, or just put it in the chat if you're watching on YouTube and Facebook. We'll get to those there. You're listening to geek to me Radio. Please stand by. Say you don't separately. You're a bust of tech hack. My laser fire backpack makes me unstoppable. You're a history brave star. Never. Think you're tough enough for my future laser cannon? Watch this. Ah, what happened? Laser fire. Neutral laser, laser fire, brave star, and tech hex. Each sold separately. Batteries not included. You from Mattel. T-Man in a time warp. Where? Ancient pre-Eternia, lost land of the dinosaurs. Thunderous Tyrannosaurus Rex battles mighty Bionotops, ferocious dinosaurs. Take this, He-Man. How can He-Man survive? Dinosaurs. New from the Masters of the Universe, figures Bionotops, Tyrannosaurus Rex, and Turbo Gacto each so separately. Can He-Man escape the past and them? You can make the good guys better. Copyright 2023, Bank of America, N.A. Hey, this is Michael Bell, the voice of G.I. Joe Duke, Major Blood, Lazy Handy Grouchy Smurf, Wonder Twins, Zan, and a whole bunch of Transformers. And you are listening to Geek To Me Radio. Welcome back to the show. Another person you'll be able to meet at Transformers Con in L.A., March 8th through the 10th. We have, obviously, the great Michael Bell. 
Uh, want to make sure we tell you maybe you're uh, maybe they've got a bunch of new comics out. They've got a new Transformers comic book out. They've got a bunch of GI Joe comics out again, including a Duke solo series and a Cobra Commander solo series. Maybe you're wondering like why haven't I seen these comic books? It's because you're not going to the right comic book shop. Bugs Comics and Games in O'Fallon, Missouri, easily accessible from either Highway 70 or from the new Page Extension Highway 364 on Bryan Road. It's an honest to goodness brick and mortar comic book store. Go in there. Tell Larry who runs the place that you heard about it on geek to me radio tell me you want to start a weekly pull list so you don't miss a comic book because i know a lot of people were upset they missed out ultimate spider-man number one if you put it on your pull list you won't miss out on it he'll take a nice copy aside put it in a box for you it's waiting when you get there if you can't be there on new comic book day it will be waiting for you thursday or friday whenever you come in the shop that way you're not missing out on any of these titles and if you join the avengers club you can start saving money on that weekly list you'll save money on your new comics your back issues your toys your games your bags your boards, Pokemon cards, whatever it is you want, you start saving money. So in this economy, it's always good to save money where you can. So when you go there, tell them you want to start a pull list and you want to join the Avengers Club. I always say it's not a comic book shop unless they've got back issues. He's got stuff from the Silver Age. He's got in his case, his little jewel case, first appearance of Punisher, first appearance of Black Panther, all these great comics. And then if you're like, well, I can't spend that kind of money, no worries. He's got dollar boxes, $5 boxes, a bunch of comics that are new right there on the rack so no matter what you're into if you're wanting to delve back into the hobby maybe you haven't been at it for a while or if you're wanting a new store maybe your local comic book shop closed down give him a like on instagram and facebook because he's putting up stuff on instagram too so if you're listening like our friends amber or chance who are not in the greater st louis area follow him on instagram bugs comics and games and you can order the comics right there say hey i want that one claim he'll ship it right to you nice and secure bugs comics and games the official comic book sponsor of geek to me radio and it wouldn't be geek to me radio if we didn't have some transformers on we've got paul eiding we've got greg berger joining us uh for not much longer this hour flies by i need a second hour so i can talk more to the both of you but i'll be able to chat with you both obviously at transformers con so that's exciting you bet you bet so with this being the 40th anniversary i know greg the first time i had you on my show it's been a while but you were talking about just you know, when you guys are in between takes or when they're, you're waiting for the next stuff, something, Frank Welker will come up and make sounds like the quarter is going into the payphone and he'll do all the sound effects and everything. You guys got to work with Scatman Crothers as the voice of jazz. Just oh, such yeah. amazing stories. Uh, if, if you could, if you wouldn't mind, if you have a favorite story that you can recall working yeah. on the series at some point, we'll start with Paul on this one. Oh, for me, it was, well, Scatman who would... He would sit and play and and uh, and sing, just listening to him. It blew me away. Uh, listen, it, it was Scatman. There was uh, a gentleman by the name of Roger C. Carmel, um, who uh, was played a character called Harry Mud on the original Star Trek. Yeah, you know, uh, and he was in, incredibly funny and imposing. And I felt like I was, uh, I was one of the newer kids in town. I'd only been in town for a, c a couple of years, and to be around these guys th that I had listened to, and Michael Bell listening to these guys uh, long before I moved here, and to be able to sit there and listen to them and play with them, blew me away. One of my favorite musicals of all time was Oliver, hmm. and. Um, and the gentleman who played Fagan in Oliver happened to be working with the Transformers, and I got to got to be with, with my heroes. And and I became I, I was a fanboy too. <laughs> uh, I was trying to act like I was like I was cool that I was like just like one of the guys, but I was I was beside myself mm. with, with joy with all these guys that I'd listened to. And there, there's always that moment. There was always that moment with me. You felt like um, um, a fake. You know, it's like, what am I doing here with these people? Because they were, they were the voices of my earlier years. Yeah. I won't say youth, but earlier years. Because Greg and I, we we were younger than most of the guys there, right? Yes, we were the new kids. We were the new Among kids. Among the new kids. Um, so just being around them in their presence and watching how they worked uh, taught me a lot. And Greg? 
Well, uh, I mean, so many moments, but uh, centric for me was doing the, the feature film in 1986, which, uh, you know, what you what you mentioned earlier, it seems like yesterday. But if yeah. I look at the calendar, I got to flip a lot of pages to get back there. <laughs> but uh, but, you know, time flies. But yes, it seems like only yesterday. But, you know, crossing paths with with Leonard Nimoy and crossing uh-huh. paths, you know, all the all the people that that came and went and luminaries. But the the day of days was uh, when Orson Welles came in to do Unicron. I mean, you, it, and I understand that that was the last or one of the last uh, uh, gigs, jobs that, that he, he did. Uh, they were starting to be fewer and further between for him uh, at that point in his life. Uh, and uh, we weren't allowed in the studio. He wanted a closed set when he recorded, but we saw him arrive and Wally Burr was divided into Wally Burr North and Wally Burr South. Mm. And he was recording in Wally Burr South and we were all herded into Wally Burr North, (laughs) which had Venetian blinds, which we had parted so that we could get up as much as our eyes and face in as we could. And uh, I had a bird's eye view and uh, a limousine pulled up. We got all excited. He didn't get out of the limousine, but they unloaded a wheelchair from the limousine. And uh, then another car pulled up uh, behind the limousine that he was in. And uh, then he was helped out of that car and put in to the wheelchair uh, and and wheeled into the studio, um, which we were not allowed into. But that was... You know, that was plenty for me. And then when the film was released, we all went to the premiere and, you know, there was there was Unicron doing what Unicron does. And, um, you know, I knew I was part of the origin of of uh, that voice recording day. So, yeah. yeah. And and of course, every time Scatman brought his ukulele and of course, Mm you know so many days for so many reasons it's it's a really just a precious memory uh, yeah. the 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 whole the whole experience and our friend chance says uh, michael bell uh, not only an incredible voice but he uh, was on three's company too which uh, one of those great underrated sitcoms in my opinion uh, we've got uh, shannon says she she's always fascinated by theater actors um And then uh, they were talking about uh, Roger C. Carmel from, you mentioned Harry Mudd, uh, just that's such a classic role. I'm surprised they haven't done a a new Harry Mudd in one of these new discoveries, uh, Star Treks that they've been putting out, because that's a cool character. Good point. Is there, when you look back on on this uh, thing, people come to you at these conventions, you both have done conventions all over I always like to ask, because I get some really funny answers, what is the most bizarre thing anyone has had you sign? We'll, we'll start with Greg on this one. Okay, don't do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a part of the anatomy. Just kind of show us with your hands. Don't actually say it out loud. We're on the air. So. <laughs> uh, let, me, let, me, uh, let me put it uh, as simply as I can. Uh, she came up and uh, asked me if I would uh, sign something for her. And I, I, in those days, said yes. And she turned around and flipped up her skirt. And uh, let, let's let's leave, as George Burns would say, that's another story for another day. <laughs> <laughs> that's... I now say, I don't think you'll be happy with that in the morning. And I'm certain that I won't be happy with that in the morning. <laughs> let's, let's uh, here's a photograph. I'll sign that. Paul? Um, well, um... Uh, I, I've signed, I've actually signed my name on people's, uh, two guys, one on his, uh, on his, his, uh, calf. Um, it wasn't for the Transformers though. Okay. It was, it was for Metal Gear Solid. Oh, sure. He had me, uh, take a, um, uh, a Sharpie, uh, and sign my name. And he wanted it, you know, good size. So I did. Uh, and then, uh, and he went and had it tattooed. 
he ta he they went over and he sent me a picture to, to prove that he had done it uh, and then he also added on uh, my my codec number from Metal Gear Solid nice um and I signed a baby they didn't have that uh, tattoo did they <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they wanted me. I, I signed Grandpa Max uh, on a baby's uh, uh, on a baby's leg. It was it was I was probably a year old. That was in New Zealand, hmm. and they they wanted me to sign uh, uh, Grandpa Max. Um, and I, I said, "You want me to my name too?" And they said, "No, no, just that's too much." So I signed Grandpa Max, uh, and that was it. But uh, on, on nobody's uh, backside did I sign anything. <laughs> that's, that's so common lately. I can't tell you how many cons I've been to where they're having, like, this woman at a convention I was at before, George Prez, the artist passed away. She had him sign on her breast, not in a unsavory area, right on the top, and she went right over. There was a booth across the thing. She had it tattooed. That's, tattooed. I can't believe how common that's becoming. Oh, I, I signed a breast, uh, but... When I was still in the military, I was uh, singing and directing a, uh, um, a singing group when I was in the military, and we were in Copenhagen. And um, I was in my early 20s, and these we were like big shots back then. Uh, and we had a, this whole group of young women come, and one I, I was also not in a, in, in a nice place, and had me sign her breast. Um, so, I, yeah, that's old hat now. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. We have Greg Berger and Paul Eiding signing butts and breasts since 1984. Hey. We'll put it, that'll be the, the T-shirt I'll wear. No tattoos, though. Time. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, we're, we're quickly approaching the, like I said, this hour has flown by. Uh, we're quickly approaching the end of it here. So I just want to remind all of you who are listening, uh, this is an event you are not going to want to miss. It's tfconla.com, I believe is the website. Uh, I think the, the Frank Welker tickets, I think, are already sold out. There might be a couple of Peter Cullen photo ops left last time I looked. Um, but obviously, Greg and Paul and John Mashita Jr. and Mike Bell and, uh, and Dan Gilvezan and all these other great people will be there for so you can have them sign something, uh, posters, comic books. I guess there's really obviously butts and breasts, too, if, if, uh, <laughs> if, if the spirit strikes you, I guess. But uh, it's going to be so much fun. So if you're listening right now, make your plans. It's coming up March 8th through the 10th in Burbank. You can fly into the Burbank airport and literally walk right across into your hotel. It's right there. It's very convenient. Across the street. So yeah. it's, it's it's amazing that this is going at 40 years, which doesn't seem possible because I'm only 22, I think, but that's a story for another time. Wibbly, wobbly, timey, wimey. Um, before we let you go, I want to make sure we, we promote anything you'd like to promote, talk about your website, social media handles, anything where people, because that's another great thing about social media and the website, is people can reach out to you and contact you directly, uh, which was unheard of, you know, 20 years ago. So we'll start with Paul, social media handles, websites, anything you want to promote? I'm just Paul Lighting on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and maybe f the number four, Paul Lighting, um, on Instagram, but it's it's just me. And uh, easy to find. Uh, and I do have, well, we're, we're doing just two more weeks of uh, the, the show. So if you're in town and you got nothing to do, want to see some Shakespeare, come by. Uh, and I, I did a short film uh, a few years ago. We were Oscar qualified last year, didn't win. But I'm still very proud of, uh, it's probably one of the most, one of the things I'm most proud of, called Frank and Emmett. You can actually watch it for free on um, YouTube. It's 12 minutes long, and anybody who watches it and comes to the comes to the uh, the con and uh, tells me that they watched it and give me a review, I'll have a little uh, special little gift for them. Perfect. That's brilliant. Frank and, and Emmett. Frank and Emmett. We'll put a link to that. If you're listening to this after the fact, uh, we'll put a link to that in the show notes so people can find it there and watch it. And cool. uh, Greg, we know we talked about you're going to be in Australia in April. Uh, anything else that you're wanting to promote or just let people know website and social media handles? Still doing all the things I've ever done and uh, coaching a new generation of very, very uh, 
terrific young talent. Um, also, uh, I'm Greg Berger on Facebook. I try to keep it lively. Um, I try to keep it authentic. And uh, I try to uh, filter what I think is, is fun and funny. Uh, but I, I, I try to keep it lively. Um, also, I'm part of some of the Easter eggy surprises for the 40th anniversary and oh, yeah. uh, Hasbro's uh, been in touch about, you know, some of the little surprises that are coming up through the course of the year. So I'll be out there and showing up and um, other, other uh, events. And uh, I'll be dropping into some non-disclosurable uh, things that, that uh, you'll see, uh, you'll see as the year progresses. Perfect. Um, I I really can't thank you both enough. I mean, it's always a pleasure to talk to you guys, and I, I can't wait to see you guys in Burbank March 8th through the 10th. Thank you so much. Looking Have forward to it. Appreciate right on. It. Be well, gentlemen. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. thanks for having. And that was a yeah. very, very pleasurable hour. Thanks again. Thank you both very, very much. I appreciate it. Cheers. There they go. Uh, it's always great. I mean, just like I said, this is part of my childhood. And any of you who listen to the show know I'm an 80s kid. And, man, I just I get a little choked up, actually, sometimes when I got people like Paul and Greg on because it just it makes me so happy. Never what I a million years thought when I was a little, you know, eight year old kid playing with these toys and watching this cartoon that I'd grow up and get to talk to such amazing people. So it always it always kind of chokes me up a little bit uh, when I when I get to do this. So thank you all. All of you were in the chats tonight. Thank you so much for your your comments. I did try to do better than I normally do, uh, keeping up with all the chats. But you guys were all entertaining each other in the chats, too. So I, I'm grateful that Amber and Chance and my flock and Shannon and everyone, Brittany and everyone, thank you for your questions. Thank you for listening and tuning in today. Um, we have an announcement next Sunday at our 400th show of geek to me Radio. I'm blown away. that I don't think the station knows I'm actually broadcasting right now. They think it's powered down. But regardless, our 400th show is going to be going on next Sunday. I've got special mystery guests who are coming in. I've got a big announcement that is going to totally rejuvenate everything we do on this show. I'm so excited to share it with all of you. So if you're listening right now, be sure to tune in next Sunday for my mystery guest. I'll give you some hints. One's an Eisner Award-winning artist, and one's an incredibly accomplished voice actor. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, but we'll be ramping up to my 400th show. I'm so excited, and hopefully we'll do another 400. Maybe I can even convince Greg and Paul to come back on uh, for another appearance. You never know. Uh, but other than that, uh, that's going to be do it. I appreciate all of you listening. Thank you very much for tuning in. And uh, as they say, until next week, my friends. St. Louis. From ABC News.